Habari brothers and sisters, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Habari za Sabui, Habari za Mchana, Habari za Gioni. To all the brothers and sisters all over the world, this is a short clip. Just wanted to let you know that uh, this is an, the beginning of the episode of Talk Back with Thomas. Uh, we had a person, one of our viewers, ask, what was I in? So I did a short video, which follows this video, showing you the bajaji that I was in. And so again, this is a talk back to our viewer, Mariah Proctor. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Asante Sana. All right, all right, all right. Babari Zasabui. Habari za Mchana, Habari za Gioni, brothers and sisters all over the world. And yes, I am talking to each and every one of you all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, brothers and sisters all over the world. The name of this channel is The African Times, and I'm Thomas. Okay, in this episode, everybody, uh, we're going to do another segment of Talk Back with Thomas. Okay? All right. And during this episode, we had a question from a young lady who wanted to know what it was that I was riding in. So we are going to answer that question right now now and I'm going to get her name and give that to you a little later so for now I just want her to see this is a bajaji it's a bajaji it's a three-wheeled vehicle that is basically like a motorcycle instead of having a seat that is kind of enough for two people to ride in this carries about three to four passengers it's almost like a very small car volkswagen beetle okay so let me see if i can get an inside shot this is what it looks like on the inside it's so you 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 carry it you drive it just like a motorcycle you see it's got two uh, two handles and if you look here, that is a clutch there. That's how you change gears. So it's a manual situation. Uh, and, then, and then you see down there, I don't know if you can see that. Yes, there's a pedal that you use to stop. And this handle here is to throttle, to give it more gas for speed. And then if you look here in the back, Sorry, I'm gonna get a better shot of it later for you. But in the back there, it's seating. You can put three people, four people in there, depending on if they're children or depending on if they are all adults. Okay, now this one is a TBS and it is manufactured in India, all right? Manufactured in India. Now, you know, every time we talk, we must talk economics. This vehicle is manufactured in India. Now, it's, it's a very small vehicle. Now, you see there's the tire in the front. There's a tire there in the back, okay? All right, now, if you look here, that up top right there, that's a canvas top. It doesn't come off, it stays on. You just assemble it and you put it on. This is actually a flap. I'm gonna see if I can show you this flap. Okay, it's a, it's a zipper. They got a zipper here, you see? You zip it down. And you can lift, you can take this zipper up and you can remove it and then you fold the flap on the inside. And when you fold the flap on the inside, that allows you to have 
an open space so the air can come through the bajaji. Now that flap that I just showed you is basically when it's folded up, it looks like this entrance here on the other side. Okay. All right. Now, when I told you, here's the other wheel so you can see three wheels. Very nice little situation. Now, when I told you about this vehicle, what I was telling you is that as, as uh, producers of goods and services, this is a product of India. The people from India, they manufacture it and then they export it here to Tanzania and I'm sure other places. And they probably have them in India too because that's where they manufacture it. We, as a people, must begin to manufacture our own vehicles in mass, in large numbers. And we can do it. We do not have to wait for other people to do it and we don't have to go to the banks to do it. You just have to get some people who have their minds together, who understand their African identity, their black African identity. And that's very important to understand. Very important to understand because if we were to pool our resources, and I don't mean the rich millionaires and billionaires, no. I'm talking to you about uh, people, by the way, here, just, I'm, I'm at the Bajaji. This is CCBRT. It's a beautiful facility. This is where uh, I'm having some medical work done. Not for me, but uh, for someone else. Uh, and it's quality hospital. And by the way, this is now, I'm in the parking lot. So again, we as a people, we don't have to wait on the billionaires. The millionaires, they're not gonna help you. They, they have no interest in helping you with that because many of them got their money, not as individuals, they got their money through participating in the capitalist system. And so as an African person, a black African person, oftentimes when you participate in that system, you follow its rules. And its rules oftentimes tells black African people will make you rich beyond your dreams, you and yourself and your family and your, maybe your close friends, you can help them, but you, as long as you do it the way we do it, you don't, we'll let you get rich in whatever area we tell you, but it must benefit us. And let me give you an example of that. Okay, you can get rich manufacturing an item, but you get your steel from us. You get your copper from us. You get your iron, your aluminum from us. You get your, gla your glassware from us. You manufacture your electrical wiring, all of your uh, rubber from us. Now, when, when they say us, what they mean is they're stealing it from Africa. They're cheating African nations. They're cheating other places to get that material and then sell it back to you. And as long as you agree to keep your mouth shut, and do all of that and let and let and be the face of the money that they have for them, then they will help you through their economic system that they've already established with each other of robbing and stealing other people from around the world, using that resources, that natural resources to build their industry. And then they will let you participate and show you to the world as a genius of industry. And you can do all of this and you see, no, we're not stopping black people or African people because look at him, he's doing it. And so you can do it too. This is, this is the propaganda that they, that they tell you. And it's just not the case. So I'm saying we as regular individuals cannot sit back and wait on them to give us the funding through their banking system to build our industry. We have to relate to one another economically and have these conversations and come together and say, okay, if it takes 50 of us or 100 of us or whatever, we're going to pool our resources and we're going to put that resource in the hands of somebody, a group of people who have the talent, the skill, and the ability to bring to life the vision that we have. For example, a small vehicle like that. We can build it. Now you're gonna have many brothers who, some, some of them have uh, 
what we call, you know, they might have a little fear in them. Well, you know, if you try to build it, they're going to come after you. This is what I was told when I was telling brothers in America, we got to come together. We got to build our own car. And we can do it. We can do it. We don't have to wait on anybody. We don't have to go to nobody. We can do it. Don't take your ideas to the W's and tell them, hey, look, okay, here's, I'm a genius. I invented this idea. Here you go. You can have it. Just pay me a lot of money. And then now they hire 250,000 employees. And then we got black African people all around the world starving and struggling for jobs, going to them that they're not going to give you. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is we can build our own vehicle. We come together. You get your electrical engineer, your computer engineer, your mechanical engineer, your welder, you, you see, you, you get your painter, you get your artist, you get your accountants, you get all these people who come together and, and talk only about the building and development of this project. If it takes you two, three years, five years, 10 years, who cares? And then you build a prototype. That's all. You do it. You spend your time doing it. You don't charge each other. Ain't about, no, you don't have time to do that. You come together and you partner because what's at stake? Millions of jobs for our people. And understand, when you create the job, you are in control of the, the uh, means of production, then you are controlling the lifestyle of the individuals and the people who are working to build your product. You can determine their pay. Their pay determines where they live, what school they go to, what kind of groceries they have, what kind of clothing they can buy, how many vacations they can do, how often they work. Do you understand? This is, is so extremely important for us not to miss this point. And these people are never going to tell you these things. They're going to tell you you got to come to them. And then they're going to deny you. But they'll take your idea because they're going to tell you you got to give us a business plan. And you give them the business plan, which is your plan on how to do what you got to do. And then they take it, oh, I'm sorry, we can't fund it and whatever. And then they go give it to somebody else. You look up and everything that you talked about is actually right in front of you. But you don't get a benefit from it. Neither does your society or your people. Okay? All right. So I had to go into that a little bit just to kind of let you guys know. Look at that Bajaji. Woo! There's another one going by. All right. I had to come by and just have you, let you guys know. And young lady, I'm going to get your name as soon as I get back. That's going to be a little extra piece at the beginning of this video. And um, we're going to let you know. So, guys, we can build it. We can build it. And when we build it, trust me when I tell you, our people will be able to buy it. And when we educate them to the importance of being able to produce their own good, manufacture it, all of the jobs and all of the things benefit us. And listen, so that you know, the people, the other people in the world, they'll tell you that they're your friends, but you produce the product, they won't even buy it. They won't buy it. They'll look for ways to prevent it from even happening, which they are doing now. But keep in mind, you must understand the power that is with us as African people. Africa, I remember I had a W tell me before I left, well, you know, Africa is just so poor. There's no, no poor country in Africa at all. Africa is one of the richest places in the world. It, it literally is. The, the problem is theft, robbery, and stealing, and cheating, and murdering that has been taking place by these people, okay? They do that, then they tell you you're poor. No, you're taking all of our wealth. We know that, many of us know that. So once we decide that we're going to come together and relate to one another economically and tell the truth about it, it's okay. Tell the truth about it. Then we can build these things. And when we build these products and services for us, okay, we don't even have to export them in order for the country to have a thriving economy. It's 1.3 billion people, and that may even be conservative. It might be 1.4, 1.5 billion people here. We don't know. But you know that it's over a billion people. That means there's a tremendous market here of people who can buy your goods and services. We can import, export here with one another from one country to the next country to the next country. African people working together for the benefit of African people. And don't let anyone come and tell you, oh no, that's wrong, free market, you're supposed to be sharing and we all gotta work together. No, it's just not true, they're not doing that with you. And they're never gonna do it with you. Understand that. All right, look, I love all of you. All right, understand. So, thanks for the wonderful question. Again, this was an episode of Talk Back with Thomas. The young lady asked about what we were riding in. It is a bajaji, okay? And we are very interested 
and producing our own without bank financing or anything like that. We come together as people. And listen, this is not a greed situation. I don't, I don't do those types of things. I don't, I'm not trying to get rich for me. I want to live, be comfortable, obviously have the things I need. But all of the other people who come, if you work with us, it's for the people. It's for our children and our posterity. We are not compromising on that. I don't want to have any discussion about any other thing other than the benefit of the African people. That's it. The African children all over the world, wherever you are. Okay? So, hey, I appreciate it. Hope you guys understand. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And again, uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.